Dollars. And we've got Albertson CEO Vivek Sankaran joining us today, along with Yahoo Finance's Julia LaRoche. Vivek, it's great to talk to you today. It's certainly a very strong quarter. I'd love to start with big picture here because we are we have been talking to a lot of executives about where things stand in the recovery picture. When you look at your overall business, um, how optimistic are you about the growth being able to be sustained? Akiko, um, first, great to be here. I feel very positive about what I'm seeing out there. Number one, we have a strong consumer and you, you've heard about the savings and the macros, but I see it in our business because people haven't traded down, still consuming better meat and quality, premium wines, spending money on discretionary items like flowers. Uh, so I think we have a strong consumer. The other thing I'm seeing is that uh, I think people are still eating more at home. Uh, people are working at home, so you tend to eat more at home when you do that. Uh, and some of the habits that we gained during the pandemic, learning to cook at home, I think that's sustained itself. So we feel positive about the outlook on our business. You know, Vivek, it's interesting. I, I heard you talk about this uh, thesis, this hypothesis that you have about the continued uh, work from home. Let's start to explore that. And you're mentioning more people uh, kind of continue to cook from home. Do you think these are long-term trends that we'll see over the next few years? We'd love to kind of explore that further with you. Yeah, Julia, I, th let me separate the trends. One is more working, for, working from home. Um, I think you're seeing a lot of companies getting to some kind of a hybrid model, three days at work, two days at home. And remember, every single day at home is substantial, a substantial shift in consumption from restaurants to e eating a breakfast and a lunch at home. Two out of 21 meals, that's literally 10% of the consumption that could move over to uh, to, uh, to purchase from stores. So I think that, that I think has a much, more, that has long lasting potential because Technology is just getting better and enabling things like what we're doing right now. Um, the cooking at home, I, I'm not sure how long that will that will sustain itself, but people have invested in more capabilities in, in, in things at home to, and they've become familiar with cooking at home. So I think that will last certainly through this year. And I, I, I'm not sure how long past that, but the first one is a very powerful force. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when we think about Albertsons, obviously last year it was a lot of those stocking up during the pandemic, a lot of big trips. But I think one of the things that's been quite notable, if I look, I'm looking at your release here, is the digital sales were sustained and on a two year stacked basis, 276% increase. How important is that digital consumer? I'm trying to understand in terms of are they making more trips? Do they, I'm putting in more orders? Do they get bigger baskets? How important is that consumer and what's kind of the big thing you have to overcome to bring more into that digital flywheel? Uh, Julia, the, the digit, if I parse out the digital sales, even though they were flat to last year, if you look at the digital trips, they were up even over last year. We had a huge spike in quarter one and the number of digital transactions we had this year were on top of that. Uh, what we saw was a decrease in baskets because people were doing less of a stock up. Uh, from from last year, which is understandable because there was uh, pe people have more comfort that product is available. Digital sales are incredibly important. The reason we like that, the uh, first is we want to give consumers what what's important to them. But when you engage somebody digitally, you get more information about them, and when you get more information, you can personalize things for them. So the digital engagement allows us. It's a nice reinforcing cycle to give things that are more relevant to that consumer. So we like that. From a challenge standpoint, it, it's really about getting people, more and more people to engage um, and get comfortable with it. Uh, and for the business itself, at least today, it, it's not as profitable as the in-store sales, but it's truly incremental. And we've got plenty of things we're doing to make sure that the business is going to be profitable in the future. So we're excited about digital sales uh, on, a, on a total basis. Yeah, Vivek, I think that's the main question. Smart for investors to be looking over that two-year stack uh, rather than just last year. As to your point, there was a lot of stocking up going on back there. But you guys up sales guidance for that kind of two-year stack, uh, you know, 11 to 12 percent, prior guidance 9 to 11. Uh, but when you talk about that and margins around digital sales, you know, that was down. And so kind of digging into that as you move forward, if digital sales do hold up, you even heard from Visa talking about uh, how much those purchases have become quite sticky for consumers moving out of the yes. pandemic. I mean, what are your expectations for 
uh, gross profit margin. If it was 29.1% this quarter, moving forward, digital sales holding up, do you expect it to continue to move down? Yeah, yeah. so we, we want the digital sales to move up. Yes, the, a digital transaction by itself is uh, less profitable than a store transaction, which is okay, because some of those sales, if I take customer point of view, the people who shop both digital and store spend a lot more with us and are very, very profitable. So, so we like that uh, combination. From a gross margin standpoint itself, you know, we, we always like to think of having many initiatives that we call gross margin tailwinds. And, and those could be operational initiatives like managing shrink, reducing cost of goods, supply chains that are continuing to reinforce the gross margin that we can use for digital sales growth, we can use it for optimizing pricing, et cetera. So we like that virtuous cycle of driving these, uh, this productivity to put it back in there. And so that helps us. In the long run though, I want to emphasize, there's a lot of things that we are doing that will continue to improve the profitability of digital sales. Um, not just operationally, but if, when you think about having a digital uh, business that's at scale, you, it opens up other avenues like advertising revenues that we can, we will continue to bring more and more of that online which makes the math work once again for the total business. Albertson, CEO of Vivek Sankaran, joining us there along with Yahoo Finance's Julia LaRoche. Thanks to both of you. Thank you all. Uh,